Okay, we want to call the Monday, January 7th Strategic Planning Committee meeting to order. Uh, we have uh, Councilman Lambert and uh, here and uh, Councilman Caso. Uh, with that, we'd like to uh, start with a prayer. Councilman Caso, if you'd like to lead us with a prayer, and then we'll go to our prayer. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to gather today and do the business of Ascension Parish. We pray your, pray your blessing on each and every family, each and every organization, each and every business that operates in this community. We pray that we will have vision for the direction of this parish that is in your will. These things we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, before we get started, uh, we'd like to uh, con have a, consider a motion to add to the agenda levy enhancement discussion. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. Uh, we have a, a motion and a second. Uh, for that, if no opposition, it will be considered 5A. Uh, and we continue down public comment period. Anyone wishing to discuss any uh, agenda item, uh, feel free to come forward whenever you, uh, your agenda item. Number four, discussion of garage sale ordinance, legal counsel. Uh, this was... Uh, brought to us by, uh, by legal counsel, Ms. Manda, uh, some issues that have been coming up in the parish, and uh, we wanted to just take a look at it and see if there was any thoughts on uh, uh, any other uh, changes where we might uh, pursue this. Lindsay? Uh, yes. This was precipitated by some complaints that the parish received from a resident, his next-door neighbor, uh, he claims has been purchasing furniture and used appliances at some of these storage sa sales and is bringing them to his residence and selling them uh, every other month. He's having some sort of estate sale. He's advertised for them. Uh, and this gentleman was looking for some sort of recourse. And when we looked at our ordinances, we said, uh, there's, you know, there's really not a whole lot we can do. We don't regulate garage sales. So one of the things that, um, or what's in your packet is the Jefferson Parish garage sale ordinance wherein they regulate the sale of uh, home items. I believe they limit this, the garage sales to twice yearly and require a permit. Uh, that's one option. Uh, there are other options. I believe East Baton Rouge Parish, I just was checking my email here, East Baton Rouge Parish allows individuals or groups uh, to have one garage sale per quarter. You don't have to get a permit, but if you have more than one garage sale in that quarter, uh, you have to get an occupational license, and the, uh, the sales tax and use authority is able to collect on that. Um, another option would be to define the resale of these storage type goods and include that in our zoning code and restrict it to cert certain zoning, perhaps exclude residential and maybe allow uh, have a, you know, commercial, crossroads, commercial, things of that nature. But this really is just to make you all aware of the issue. Um, maybe we can study it a little further and, and determine what, if any, action you'd like to take. But I just wanted you all to be aware of it and take some time to study it. Any comments or further questions? Uh, personal feelings, I, uh, I don't think we should miss... Go ahead, Kendall. Ken. Go ahead. Go ahead. Lindsay, do, you, do we hear this often, or, do, or is this one constituent issue the, that has come This was one, one complaint that we've received. To my knowledge, there have not been any other additional complaints regarding this type of resale or garage sale type activity. Uh, but this gentleman is very, very upset and has sure. been persistent in his complaining. So uh, we did offer to at least make his complaint to you all and see if there was a, a solution uh, that could please everyone in this in this situation but I, it's I not a regular further, occurrence. further help 
you know, anyone out, uh, it, it has happened in other parishes where people just kind of use the guise of a garage sale to start opening up some part-time uh, sales mm -hmm. and and selling appliances, clothes, uh, and it ends up being, uh, you know, these thr almost like a thrift store mm -hmm. uh, in people's neighborhoods. And one thing we don't want to have, the other thing we really don't want to get into permitting all of this, but... Right. Uh, I, I'm looking for it to be more and more of a problem as we continue on, and it's fine if they're not doing it in your neighborhood. Well, typically in your subdivisions with homeowners associations, this type of conduct will not be allowed. Mm -hmm. This particular gentleman lives um, in a more rural area, but he's just having this, this issue with his neighbor. So, so I, I would like to see us try to address what gives him relief and perhaps other people in the exact, you know, in similar situations to him and not necessarily get into the business of regulating garage sales right what would be the what would what would address his issue mm -hmm. best in your opinion well we could define the use that is occurring at his neighbors which according to him is the purchase of items at a storage unit for with the intent to resell the item we could define that as a commercial activity and limit the use to certain zoning designations, like I said, the commercial, the crossroads commercial, and exclude them from residential. Um, but if you happen to think that that's not such a bad idea in certain areas, maybe you could limit the time and place and say, well, maybe we do want to allow the resale of this furniture, but we want to limit it uh, to twice a year limited to you know one morning or it, there, there are lots of approaches to it if you don't want to regulate garage sales in general um, but what we would have to do is narrowly define what the use is and when and where we want it to happen councilman lamb hey, mr chairman I, I don't have a problem with it is um as long as they can have, you know, four garage sales, four moving sales. I, I know they have a lot of moving sales out there. Uh, and again, I, I don't want to get into any permitting uh, type of uh, business. We have enough of that now. And uh, I would just like to continue to look at this. And uh, I see this is Jefferson. Right. Uh, do you have Baton Rouge? Uh, we've looked at East Baton Rouge Parish. As I said, from what we understand, they do not permit garage sales, but they do have restrictions and they do define the garage sales. And I believe they, they do not allow you to have a garage sale more than once a quarter. If you elect to have a garage sale month, more than once a quarter, that's when you've got to get your occupational license. Okay. Yeah, then it becomes more than a garage sale. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, uh, Mr. Bartes. Yeah, this gentleman is very irate. Uh, he's come to my office a couple of times. Uh, he's definitely having a problem with this. Uh, they're unloading a lot of stuff uh, right next door to his house. I actually got a big trailer where they store all this stuff. So, you know, we need to kind of look at something to where we can, uh, you know, at least protect this neighbor, protect the other neighbor, or protect other people in our parish from uh, this type of activity. Uh, I don't mind a guy going in business if he does that and selling it mm -hmm. and uh, gets, a, uh, like you said, an occupational license or something. Uh, you know, you're, that's more than a garage sale. A garage sale is, is supposed to let a kind of get rid of some stuff that you don't want on, on occasion from your house, not go buy it somewhere else and anything else that uh, you got left over that you can't get rid of. You put it out, you know, if you continually do it. I think I'm like Dempsey with the, maybe the, I'd, I'd look like to look more at the Baton Rouge one where it could be quarterly, and if it's any more than that, uh, at least, you know, if we get a complaint that they've had more than four in a year, then we can uh, have some kind of teeth where we can stop that. But you certainly don't want to get into the. I don't really want to regulate garage sales no. either. But we need to have some kind of relief from this type of activity, and it's not fair to other businesses that pay taxes. That's right. Uh, to allow these people to go out and uh, do what you do, uh, and you pay t your taxes, and and they don't. So. So we. So could we yeah. ask Lindsay to define? Perhaps by ordinance we need to define what a garage sale is and what commercial resale is and then place some stipulations as the parish president suggested on how frequently <coughs> something can be garage sailed and, and if it is actually a resale mm -hmm. of, an, of, of something then it's not a garage sale and define 
where that can be done. Right. And yes. then we'd be getting real specific without having an issue with garage sales. Yeah. Well, in order to accomplish that, I don't know that we would even have to define garage sale. We could just define, you know, this resale, purchasing items with the intent to resell. And once we define that, we can stick it in the go the zoning code where it belongs and determine, do you, do you want these things to occur in a residential zoning? Uh, you know, and, and then we can sort of address the time and place. Uh, if, I like if, if, um, I, I, I think it's pretty obvious, general consensus, nobody wants to regulate normal garage sales, and, uh, but we do want to protect the citizens from, uh, from people that are doing things that's, uh, in neighborhoods that it's not correct. Uh, uh, I, I think it would be prudent to, uh, I, I could work with Ms. Manda uh, for the next month and, and get some two or three uh, choices, uh, uh, possible choices to come back to the next meeting and present and uh, I, I think it's pretty clear Linda what, what the intent would be uh, for us and we we'll get some uh, get some choices and come back and and review it uh, next month and see if there's something we want to move forward on. I'd be happy with okay. that. Yeah. Okay thank you very much appreciate it. Uh, number five discussion proposed changes to parish pipeline ordinance Rick Welber uh, as everyone uh, may or may not be aware the last few months we've been uh, and Rick has been working very hard on on updating our pipeline ordinance uh, which we've uh, done this year uh, we found out after a number of incidences that pipelines were completely unregulated in the parish no matter how dangerous they were and uh, we're trying to look at ways to protect the citizens and also be able to get out information when incidences happen. Uh, and so this is what led to this point. Uh, Rick has gone to a number of meetings and done his research, and he's hopefully making our final recommendation to move forward with the uh, council. Mr. Chairman, on the left side of the packet that you have was the read ahead documents that were given to the members of the uh, local emergency planning committee. I put these in here for to, uh, to review at your convenience. The right side of your packet contains the, the meeting minutes from the LEPC itself. And on page four was one of the requests that this committee made was that we establish these subcommittees to take a look at, at pipelines uh, and take a look at fixed site release notifications. Uh, for the fixed site release notifications, our first meeting will be on January 23rd. And then for the uh, pipelines will be on uh, January 16th. Uh, these two subcommittees will meet twice uh, prior to our next LAPC meeting, which will be in March. What we want to do is, is make sure that we flesh both of these things out before we submit it back to parish government and the sheriff's department and industry and fire to make sure that we can accomplish what we say we're going to accomplish. Uh, then it will be vetted out. And uh, our projected date is, is to begin enforcement of this by 1 April. So the, the June LAPC meeting is when this goes back in front of them uh, for their decision. Uh, specific to uh, pipelines itself, on the back of the, your uh, staple to the back of your, your minutes is the letter that we got from LA One Call explaining their processes and our budget approval. And the contract is then legal now, waiting to be forwarded to the parish president. Uh, <coughs> fairly reasonable cost for, for, for the baseline uh, account that we need to establish with LA One Call, so that should be fairly reasonable. Behind that, in your packet, you'll see a map. Uh, I coordinated with Ricky Compton in planning and zoning, and what we did was overlay the pipeline right-of-ways over the population density and zoning maps of the parish, and it got it down to a point where we believe that it's going to be manageable. All the light blue areas that you see running across the, the pipeline right-of-ways are going to be shape files that will be created that will be created by the IT department, and then we'll subsequently submit that to LA One Call. And only if excavation is taking place within those zones will we be notified. But we'll be notified immediately two days before they start digging. And then we can make sure that all the due, dil due diligence is done, uh, that they've marked the pipeline right away, is that they've done uh, all the ground penetrating radar or magometer results before they start digging. But this is kind of where we're at now. What we looked at was schools, nursing homes, uh, hospitals, uh, uh, high population density, uh, anywhere there could be a risk, but it's pro approximately 30 places that we, we identified on the maps from that. Okay. Well, we just got to coordinate with IT to get the shape files done and submitted. 
Okay, and this would be presented to uh, to vendors whenever they would begin uh, any whenever they come for their permit. Once it wouldn't be presented, it, it could be. But what we're going to do with this shape file first is submit it to LA One Call to make to ensure that it's geocoded into the database. Once it's geocoded into LA One Call's database, when they submit a permit to the state to excavate, then we, we're notified immediately. And if we are, we can notify them that they do need a permit. Uh, once we do that, but what I recommend is that after 1 April, let me assess the impact that this is going to have on the parish, because we really don't know. Right now, we're looking at 1,500 tickets a month. We don't know how many tickets we're going to get based on what we have on this shape file. So let me assess it for 60 to 90 days and see what the impact is to all involved, and I can give you a better idea of what we need for permitting and and for an ordinance. Okay. So you just want to wait and, and do further action at that point in time. Right. I mean, it's a, it's a pretty big step, and, and if we if we went with the entire parish, it, yep. it would almost be an unmanageable pro process. I just want to make sure before we move into an ordinance and a permitting process that we can accomplish what we say we need to accomplish. All right. Now, within your plan, there is there is a plan to require them to at least come f to the parish for a permit if they're going to put pipelines in the parish. What we the the plan is uh, to to move forward with getting a permit only in the areas that you see identified on this map, not the entire parish, but so in other words, if 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 I'm company ABC and I'm putting a 16-inch pipeline through the parish, I don't have to get a permit unless I go through one of these areas. If you go through one of these at-risk areas, you're going to be notified. Uh, we'll be notified that you're going to be digging in it. Then we contact not only that operator that's doing the digging, but all other operators that own a, a pipeline within the right of way, and mm -hmm. to make sure that they mark the, their pipes and to make sure that everything is identified. Now we've got 48 hours from the time they they say they they issue the ticket to do this. Yeah. Right. Uh, Rick, Brother we Martinez? we uh, recently passed an ordinance that requires uh, all the casing on these pipes to be at least a half inch thick. I don't know if the pipelines have been notified of this ordinance, but uh, uh, when you're doing this, I'd like you to also uh, make sure that they all get a copy of the ordinance. O on the casing issues? Yes. Okay. Well, well and that's, that's one of the problems that I have. If, yep. if, if someone is not required to have a uh, permit, yeah, how are we gonna they, can be, they can be doing a pipeline that doesn't meet our ordinances for their safety regulations uh, unless, we, unless we know. And, and I'm not talking about an individual dig. I'm talking about if somebody's going to go through Ascension Parish with a pipeline, the first thing they need to do is get a permit so we'll know the route or the area that they're going. Uh, and right now, they don't even have any. They notify us, but we don't have any. Yeah. You don't have any to I, I mean, there's no, and, and not that we're going to uh, get them to do anything, but that there is some suggestions that we can make. For instance, one of the pipelines that went through the area where I live, they could have easily gone an alternate route and, and followed the, the uh, right-of-ways, existing right-of-ways with existing pipelines in them, and now they created a whole new area with another pipeline. And it was just unnecessary. And so I, I, I just think that those things uh, with a, a meeting with parish officials, they could take a look at the existing pipeline right of ways and then they may, may be willing to reroute uh, their pipeline to try to satisfy, uh, make it a little bit harder to go to new uh, right of ways instead of using the existing right of ways. It's, it's also a component of, of the proposed ordinance to, for a new pipeline being installed. Uh, but a key is, is that most of these pipeline ruptures occur during excavation. And we wanted to cover to make sure that we covered this, but that that can be a, a key component of it. Also, is that if you're putting in a new pipeline, let, let us assess the route that you're taking and, and, and the right of ways that you're using. So that that could be a part of the uh, uh, of, of the ordinance. Well, you know, and, and I don't, I'm not sure. I, I thought we had made it. We, we want to make sure that that uh, w within that final ordinance, that that uh, anyone that comes through the parish uh, at least has to come through parish government and and get a permit uh, with. With the right of ways and the and and the, and the proposed route and everything, uh, so okay. that we can know. And that way, at least we can go ahead and put it on our GPS system to where, mm -hmm. and 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 you know, put it permanently on our records to where we would at least know in the future and then have that record in the future and what kind of pipeline it is. And uh, certainly, uh, 
I still worry about what they're putting in the ground. I mean, I, I just want to make sure that some way or other we can verify that they put in half inch. Right. So. Yes, Mr. Castle. It, it, did we also ass assess a fee for permits to come into the parish with a new installation? Mm -hmm. I looked at, at different jurisdictions and what they're charging for the, for, for the fees for just the permit itself, and it, it's, it's, it's a pretty wide variance in what they're charging throughout, throughout the United States. So it, can, can we get but, that information as well? Because that's yeah, I mean, something we, I think we need. But, you know, we, we have it in our existing pipeline ordinance. And I, uh, uh, Rick, have you reviewed the one that we have? Slightly, but I haven't reviewed it all. Uh, yeah, I, I think some of the information that you were looking for is in that, and it does have to be updated. But if you have any questions, we can go over it, and, uh, you know, we, we can meet with administration, the uh, rest of the administration, with Tommy, and, and, uh, and, and go over it, make sure that, that the important parts are covered and, and remain in there. One of the main reasons when we were looking at Parker Road, uh, you know, it cost us a million dollars to to move that pipeline because it didn't. It wasn't a half inch thick pipe. Mm -hmm. Would have been uh, wouldn't have had to do such, and uh, it would been strong okay, enough so. to put it there. So, in the future, you want to know uh, also if we're going to build new roads or do anything like that or build any kind of new infrastructure. Uh, we certainly want to be able to, to do so without having to spend that kind of money to move a pipeline. Well, and it's also a lot more fair to the pipeline companies if they're coming through and they don't uh, know our ordinances and our regulations. If they come through uh, without getting their permit, uh, you know, and, and, and then they, they don't meet our specifications, and that puts everybody in a bind. So I'd like to make sure that we get that done. It, this this was specific for emergency response and notifications. I mean, it's, it's still we, we want to capture what you just said, but this this from uh, what we've done in the past is specifically for notifications and response to to what we're going on. Well, we, we just have to make sure within all of that is that the very first thing they do is that they, you know, they get a permit that everyone and we start from that po that point. Correct. Uh, okay. So we can go from there. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Lambert. Yeah, Rick, uh, I think the last time we had met, I think you was in yeah. a meeting with uh, Mr. David Fry uh, the prior uh, yes. week or so. Um, I like, I, I really appreciate the, uh, the mapping. Uh, what information you get, did you get from him as far as zoning that we were talking about, zoning out those areas? In fact, it's, uh, it was his recommendations uh, to kind of come up with a shape file similar to this. Our IT department can develop <laughs> it, but what he recommended is that we need – Whatever we submit to him needs to be able to be geocoded onto his system. Uh, and when his operators get a call, uh, the, the, uh, the, the pipeline contractor has to submit a Latin long for, for the entire length of the project. And if, if that Latin long falls into anywhere within the polygon on our shape file, we're immediately notified uh, by email in our office. So that, that's going to be a key to, to moving forward with this. Uh, and I think that where we're at now is going to be much more manageable. I still want the input from the uh, pipeline operators in the parish. I think their their information is key, uh, but but I think we uh, we're on the right path for it. Definitely, good job, Tim. Appreciate it. Outstanding work. Thank you. And 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 Rick, if you can uh, give us a call, I'd, I'd like to have one of the council members attend that meeting also. We, Absolutely. But let, let them know the intentions. If you can get that map out to the uh, other councilmen too. Yeah. Well. I'll, We'll see if we're ready to get it Yeah, just there. kind of look at it. A anything else, uh, President Martinez? Rick, and we're just going to wait in, uh, in, until this time period to, uh, before we move forward with anything else. And, I, and I'll keep you informed monthly as, as we progress. Okay. Good. Senator, if you can make sure and put that on the, the next agenda. Uh, next item. Uh, been... Uh, kicking around some uh, and having discussions on uh, levy enhancements. I know uh, a couple of years ago, uh, Ascension Parish had uh, put up his chair of, of the monies to do a study uh, on levy enhancement from Baton Rouge to New Orleans, uh, bicycle paths and uh, enhancement uh, areas and so on. Uh, been meeting with uh, Mr. Eric Poche of SJB about the possibilities uh, in Ascension Parish, and we found out uh, they ha actually have an area that would be uh, take away a lot of the B 
be absent of a lot of the problems that you would have uh, trying to go around industry and things of that sort that would also bring about uh, a great deal of recreational uh, values and uh, economic development so uh, with that what we will what we're out looking for is to try to let people know uh, what we're discussions about and and uh, we're trying to look forward to getting uh, funding and then also getting any matching funding trying to get assistance with matching funding uh, for that uh, this is a probably a couple year process and uh, but we just want to fill in everyone with uh, what's going on and what what we're trying to do Eric uh, Uh, I'm with SJB Group, and as uh, uh, Chairman Shakes and I said, uh, about uh, three years ago, we conducted a feasibility study for the Pontchartrain Levy District between Baton Rouge and New Orleans on the East Bank. Uh, all of the parishes, uh, with the exception of Ascension, have gotten started on their on their phase one. One of the legs that we, which you can see on the map on on the sheet that I gave you. One of the, the, the phase one area that we talked about was this, as uh, Chairman Shakes Nada said, between uh, Highway 44 and the old uh, ferry landing at Dara. And that's about a five mile uh, length. I've got some numbers on that as far as breakdowns using transportation alternatives funding with the required uh, costs as far as match and what the parish participation would have to be. Uh, obviously, um, you probably are aware of the many economic benefits, health benefits, connectivity, transportation benefits. Uh, uh, Kevin Kelly has gotten his scenic byways grant to do his maritime museum, riverboat landing, uh, and overlooked at Homer's house. And he had expressed an interest uh, in giving any assistance as far as us, you know, coming up to his property, across his property, what have you. He's going to do some portion of that. Um, what I spoke with Val Horton today, as it stands right now, they're normally speaking under the Transportation Enhancements Program, which is on a, uh, I guess, biannual cycle every other odd numbered year. The next uh, application period opens up in June July of 2013 and they have been very good at funding projects like this several years back when St. Charles first started in the early 2000s you could count on getting anywhere from two three hundred thousand dollars now there are possibilities of getting eight nine hundred thousand a million dollars from transportation enhancements in my discussion with Ms. Horton today she basically for lack of a better explanation said she doesn't know FHWA with the new transportation bill she's not 100 percent sure of how things are going to go with this next cycle that's opening up so I'm going off of based off of what we have uh, to this point um, another item that I brought to Chairman Shake uh, attention today when speaking with him was I had acted over the last year and a half since completing the feasibility study in 2009 as a kind of a liaison between the levy district and the parishes and offering technical and, and funding assistance to the parishes. And we've kind of reached the end of that road since just about all of the parishes have gotten started and, and, and taken on the task. And they expressed to me that what they would like to see would be for the parishes to come forward and to request assistance as far as for planning and uh, obtaining funds, application process, etc. Uh, so I guess that's something that needs to be considered. Uh, Chairman Shakes Knott and I spoke a few weeks ago about some different possibilities for funding and assistance and we just wanted to get it out there and I wanted to give you folks this information and see if there were any questions that you had that I could answer uh, and try to kind of get something moving I guess for this phase one portion in Ascension and, uh, and basically for everyone it's it's uh, first part that they're looking at would be from around Armet to Darrow area along the river the reason it's uh, 
a choice spot is because there's no industry in that area. Right. Uh, and it would also provide for a connection across the river with Donaldsonville. And, uh, and for any future down through the years, uh, a, a future connection to Pelican Point area all the way to Gonzales or right. if they had the, the junior college or anything like that if anyone would want to continue this. And, and you have to look uh, 10, 20 years down the line for these things. Uh, so that's why we were trying to target something that was actually feasible to be uh, mm -hmm. being done. Uh, they've already started uh, levy enhancement on the West Bank in Donaldsonville, and they're going into that second phase uh, now, and it's it's really uh, done a lot to promote the, mm -hmm. uh, the the river area. So, with the uh, homeless house and Bocage and Hermitage uh, within that area, it would it would lend a, a great deal. Uh, so, uh, what they're looking for for numbers right now, uh, if it would be uh, 4.8 miles of trail, and this is just proposals. This could be yes. uh, uh, have, have much less than this uh, or whatever, but uh, just an example of, of 4.85 miles of trail at 250,000 per mile would be uh, 1.2 million. If you would do a quarter mile section of the amenities with the trails, uh, what Donaldsonville has in their area would be uh, a parking area, a sitting area, and a, a, a nice area would be uh, 450,000. And then the, the estimated cost to the parish would be uh, 279,000 out of a $1.8 million. And uh, what we're really looking for right now is kind of a blessing to continue to try to, uh, to receive other funding uh, be able to approach uh, Pontchartrain Levy District to get uh, help them with get them to help us with our matching costs. Uh, so, what they have right now is a 95-5 uh, match, and uh, we don't know whether that's going to be within this this next one. But uh, we're trying to get as much matching funds as we can. <coughs> this guy's a so our neighboring parishes have already begun to participate in this program, I understand. Yes, St. Charles started back in 2002, and, and basically they've got just about everything designed and funded. Uh, I think they've got one or two sections left. I mean, they're to the uh, guide levy uh, at the Bonacari, and they've probably got about three miles to go. St. John's on their phase 3A. So they're going to be about halfway through their parishes in the next couple of years when they get that phase done. Uh, we're working on phase one and two in St. James Parish. Uh, uh, St. Gabriel in Iberville has, a, has gotten a recreational trails grant, and they're trying to do three-quarters of a mile or a mile there. And, of course, East Baton Rouge, uh, we assisted getting them funding to get down to Ben-Hur Road, which is going to be about uh, three or four miles from the parish line between East Baton Rouge and Iberville. So it's, it's really gained a lot of steam in the last several years. And the people that, that I have talked to over the last several years since I've been dealing with this, the uh, first thing they say is, when's it, when's it going to happen? When's it going to happen? When's it going to happen? I mean, it, it, people, it's one of those things where if you build it, they will come. Uh, the, the biggest problem that, that, that I've noticed over the last several years is in St. Charles, who has the most trails in their, in their parish, when you get a mile or two of this is no big deal because you basically have people coming from really close by, crossing the river road from the neighborhoods and all of that. But once you start getting, you know, three, five, seven, ten, twelve miles, you get people coming from out of town. It's just like the Tammany Trace. Um, there were interviews that I read and people that I talked to that, that once that thing really got developed, they're trying. Their people are clamoring to, to develop property there. They want them to tie to the, to the neighborhoods. Uh, so that they can, can connect there, uh, and they're trying to find other avenues and greenways to connect trails to the Tammany Trace. Well, that would uh, be a great problem to have. Uh, yeah, I mean it's and, and it it's a it's a long process. I envisioned this thing when when you know when I originally started getting involved with it, I envisioned it as a 20 25 year process. You know, you do it little bits and pieces, and and I'm always looking for ways to 
try and go from instead of just doing one one parish, trying to do it as a as a block and and, and get segments done longer, larger uh, segments done. And I mean, we're always you know looking for ideas and ways to try and fund these things to to get it moving, and it's really catching on on the West Bank as well. Of course, you know you've got the parishes split from one side to the other. And as soon as you say something about the East Bank, the West Bank, say, so well, when are you going to do it over here? Uh, so, you know, there have been ideas that we've had about doing loops, you know, between Donsonville and St. Francisville. Uh, I mean, there's just so many ways that you can do it and so many things that you can do. And, and all of the research that I have done showed tremendous economic impact when these, when these trails were, were built. Uh, yeah. So it's, it's, we feel like it's a, it's a really good avenue to go down. Well, I would be extremely excited. I, I may had the opportunity to travel to St. Louis to Louisville last year, mm -hmm. uh, and looked at the tremendous network of trails and opportunity for recreation that they have there, and it was absolutely fascinating to me. So I'm thrilled to see this come before us. I don't understand why we haven't done something this spectacular in the past. Uh, cost a lot of money. <laughs> it cost a lot of money. Uh, but the opportunity to to get grant funding is, you know, if, if I can trade my 295000 for a million something, I'll do it every day. Mm -hmm. So uh, I certainly would like to see us move forward and, and ascertain, get some more information and perhaps have you come and, and show us what the thing might look like and okay. help us to envision this thing so that we can better explain it to our citizens. Sure. But it's a quality of life issue. I, I also have friends of mine who are plant managers here, and uh, one of the issues that they present to me often is that uh, as much as as they want to come to Ascension Parish and as, as much as they want to be a part of a new plant that's coming here, it's hard to get their wives to come. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's really hard to recruit uh, upper-level management from outside of our community right. to this community because we frankly lack quality of life. Uh, yeah activities such as biking and right. walking paths and things like that. So, uh, you know, those are the folks we want to attract, and we certainly want to keep our young people in our community. And I know that young people want to ride bikes, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to avoid running over yeah. them on the highways in Ascension right. Parish. So if we could get them off the highway and onto trails, that would be absolutely wonderful. So I think it's a public safety issue as well as a quality of life issue. And I, I'd love to hear from the parish president uh, if we would have a possibility of finding funding for this and how he actually, feels about it. Actually, uh, when I was actually in a prior life, I did work with uh, <laughs> SGB, and this was the idea that uh, I went and met with all the parishes, and I met with the uh, levy board because I think it's a fantastic idea, and it would be a, it's a 100-mile trail. They have a lot of a different, uh, like, races 100 miles and uh, between Baton Rouge and New Orleans that would do it and the whole goal was to connect St. Charles got a little piece done uh, of course Jefferson Parish has a, a great mm -hmm. deal if you go to LSU out uh, by LSU on the levee there's uh, a, a, they did one phase and then they did a second phase and uh, I think every parish bought into the idea and I think it's great for economic development and uh, I think the area that you're talking about now is, is, a, is a really good thing. So I, I would suggest, strongly suggest, that uh, we apply for the enhancement grant and uh, go forward with it. And if we're selected, lucky enough to be selected, then you can kind of move on. Uh, probably best to, to, to go for one phase, uh, the 450000 uh at a time, and con and continually every funding cycle go ahead and, uh, and reapply for that next phase and once you get started with it then uh, it'll take a while but the first phase will be uh, what how much is one of the phases well, they, in there? They, they, well they the phase them. one that we had was five five a little over five miles and I mean I estimate it to be about one one point million eight with design and and everything but they generally don't give you a, a two million dollar to no, each I mean, parish they, what they'll they, do is maybe allocate a half a million to every parish yeah, or seven hundred and fifty thousand is the max they they generally right. do per funding cycle because they're limited i think to about twelve million dollars that used to be 
They uh, they had uh, I think they had uh, eighteen or nineteen million dollars the last up. cycle. Yeah. St. James got a little over a million. East Baton Rouge got like one point four, <coughs> one point five. So well, if we can get one million, at least go for for that and maybe do a sixty yeah, percent deal. Uh, I think it'd be a good idea, and then go for next phase. You'd go in, but whatever you know, you think. Uh, Maybe do two and a half miles first, and uh, a, right. a three miles, and then go two point eight. Well, I would I would be extremely proud to be to know that Ascension Parish began to participate in this vision, and I, I feel certain that my constituents would be thrilled to have this opportunity in our parish. Uh, a little bit of background also. Uh, Donaldsonville has taken the the bull by the horns. Has already gotten started, and they they, they have. Uh, their first phase of their levy enhancement uh, by the river uh, completed, and they're getting ready to start on the second phase and going. They're moving down toward uh, the bridge. Mm -hmm. uh, that's through the city of Donaldsonville, and they've gone through with uh, uh, part of this program. And uh, the, the as we got into discussions with it, uh, with Mr. Poche and everything, and looking into feasibilities with. Uh, uh, with uh, the, the college that is being located in Edenborn, uh, right along Highway 44, it's a very short trip through a very large populated area, which you're looking down 10 years down the road, it could be something that could be attached to this trail and with a very short uh, passage through to Lamar Dixon. So it gives you a route and you could eventually make a, cir uh, a circular uh, route from Darrow Mm -hmm. uh, and continue on and end up at Lamar Dixon. So uh, one of the things that uh, Parish President was talking about, one of those loops uh, would be available, you're looking at maybe 10 years down the line, where we could attract people to come in here and, and do some activities and, and bring people back to, to the river and, uh, and, and still utilize Lamar Dixon and the junior college and, and areas uh, that are attractive to that. So. Uh, that's the intention, and, and uh, you know we're just kind of looking for blessing to continue. And one of the major issues that I find is a problem is the lack of public transportation in Ascension Parish. Greatly affects those young people who are attempting to go to River Parish Community College and who don't necessarily have good transportation. If they could ride their bike, that would be a, a blessing. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, so I think that that would certainly be something we would want to pursue is connecting right. this trail to the to Edenborn and, and making it possible for, for people to get there um, that that's going to be a major issue going forward how well we educate our kids and what opportunity we give them to, to be educated mm -hmm. so with lacking public transportation that's real hard for some people who desperately yeah. need an education in order to fight their way out of poverty so I, w I would love to see us pursue this in whatever way is necessary Okay. Uh, I have no problem with it, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. I would uh I would go ahead and make the motion that we continue the uh the findings and the uh apply for the additional funding. Yes. I mean it, and this is something that, that we can do. Uh, we we were just trying to I inform everyone uh and and I'll be approaching uh Pine Train Levy District, see if we can get uh some of those matching funds that they had talked about and try to cut the parish uh, cost down as much as possible and then see what the feasibility and, and uh, on that first phase would be. So hopefully we can bring you back something uh, in the future, in the not too distant future, that would be practical for the parish. So we just want to inform everyone. Anything I'd be else? happy to second Dempsey's motion. <laughs> oh, um, uh, <laughs> But Whatever you Mr. Want. Lambert yeah. had a motion to uh, continue forward to uh, explore this and second, uh, second by Ms. Caso. Uh, any further discussion or in, no objection? Uh, that that motion is carried and so we want to continue to explore this and right. uh, see what avenues we have with that. Thank right. you, Mr. Poche. Thank you. With that, move to adjourn, Mr. Chairman. Motion second. by Mr. Lambert, second by Ms. Caso. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>